Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Happy Sunday to you all. Happy Sunday to you all. <laughs> so today is definitely going to be a very powerful discussion. So welcome, welcome, welcome from wherever you are. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. You are here with me, Karasa Koa Akima, founder of the Afro Dom Network Academy and Magazine. So uh, today's conversation is imperative, talking about the importance of financial domination, talking about the importance of financial domination for Black women specifically, and how to really see the value of financial domination in today's culture and climate, specifically focusing on those of us who are in the United States of America, America with three Ks. So um, for those of you who are our international students or you are tuning in from other places where our students reside, like the United Kingdom, uh, East Africa, West Africa, South America, Canada, um, all of you guys all across the world, Brazil, Australia, wherever you're tuning in from. Today, I'm going to be primarily speaking to uh, my students who are here in the United States uh, with me and the impact and importance of financial domination in today's culture, climate, etc. Now, of course, stating the obvious, I look a lot different than the last time you saw me here on live. You can keep those comments to yourself about how you feel about it. Okay. Uh, but obviously there's been a change in my overall appearance and demeanor. And I think that that is true for a lot of black women right now in today's culture and climate since last week's uh, presidential election in the United States. So um, again, if it's obvious that my appearance has changed to you, you can keep your fucking comments about it to yourself. And if you want to continue to be here and in this environment and taking advantage of the opportunity and the resources and the information that we have, keep that to yourself. Focusing on those of you who are here with me, I want you to put this information on the timeline. I want you to share this information in your group chats. I want you to share this information on Twitter. I want you to share this information with your girlfriends. If you've been talking about financial domination for the last several weeks, if you've been watching my live stories about financial domination over the last several days, this information is for you. This live is for you. And if you are watching on the replay, because this replay is going to be available um, sometime this evening. It is Sunday, November 10th, 2024. So this replay is going to be available sometime this evening on my YouTube channel. Uh, more videos that I've already put out over the last several years since 2017 as a financial dominatrix can be found on that YouTube channel as well. The link for that is in my uh, bio here on TikTok. Now, while we are on the name of links in bio, and access to resources and information. I always like to say this before I start the real conversation. Hey, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Um, I always like to say in the name of links and bios and information, you can find all of that here on my TikTok page whenever you are ready. Um, I'm going to be answering some questions for those of you who are incoming students and stuff like that, as I always do about financial domination. But if you are ready to jump the line, so to speak, I am going to be giving away some free consultations with me today uh, for this week. I have some appointments available um, on my calendar this week. So for those of you who are tuned in and tuned in live, uh, you can click the link in my bio as a black woman over the age of 21 and become a student of the Afrodom Network by becoming a member. By doing so, you'll have access to all of our classes, all of our textbooks, all of our resources, 
and the like. Um, that is information that's available for you right now at just $29.99. And for the next 10 uh, new enrollees, I should say. Um, I'm going to be giving those ladies, the next 10 ladies that subscribe today while I am live and online with you guys, I'm going to be giving you guys a free one hour consultation with me this week. Now, like I said, today's topic is the importance of financial domination. And as the title specifically states, how financial domination plays into wealth building and wealth redistribution for black women specifically. So there's a lot of information that you'll see about financial domination online how to get into it, um, how to start your business as a financial dominatrix, how to find subs, what people to avoid, who to look for, right? There's a lot of varying and vast information online about this as financial domination has become more and more popular since 2017. However, the disclaimer is not all information that you see online, especially on sites like TikTok, not all the information that you see online about financial domination, how to get started safely, legitimately, how to protect your identity, how to protect your income, how to build passive income. Not all of that information is accurate or credible, which is why I am here and why I have been an educator in this space specifically since 2000. 19. So for those of you who are new and joining the live, welcome for the first time. Welcome. Uh, by definition, let me give it to you if you're taking notes. By definition, financial domination is the dom sub act of exchanging power through monetary gifts. Okay. One more time. Financial domination is the dom sub act of exchanging power through monetary gifts. This could be cash, gift cards, shopping trips, free rent, bills paid, vacations, um, buying you a property, whatever. Materialistic um, or, or access to mentorship or resources. But again, the exchange of power as dumb and sub through monetary gifts. Financial domination is a very specific niche sector of adult work, specifically in the kink community, okay? So for those of you who have never heard it that clear, never got that more uh, concise or professional of a definition, let this be the information that you need going forward to make a decision for yourself as uh, someone who's considering or someone who's new if this is going to be the correct medium for you as an entrepreneur, okay? Just like any other form of entrepreneurship, financial domination does take time uh, to build up a social media presence, build up a brand, build up a marketing strategy that works for you, your schedule, your personality, what you want to create, and time to build streams of income for yourself. Whether you want to be a writer or a content creator or a model or a cam girl or a chat line hottie whatever and however you choose to cut it, it does as any other form of entrepreneurship, take its necessary time to build up yourself, your success. One of the reasons why financial domination has become so popular is because specifically for black women, there's always, again, in the 21st century and the millennial kind of uh, age range, the, the conversation on social media, the conversation on the internet for the last several years has always been this combative energy uh, between black men and black women, mostly of relationships. Black women, do you want to go 50-50 in your relationships? Black women, why isn't it okay that um, you don't want to go 50-50 and that makes you a gold digger? Um, black men, why are you choosing to date outside of your race and you are so against black women because you're saying that they're difficult? Or It's always been this kind of cyclical conversation of what it boils down to, misogyny, capitalism, greed 
and a clear indicator that Black women have always been more mature, intellectually superior, and from a financial uh, perspective, um, from the scope of education, who has who is the most educated, who is starting the most businesses, who is making the most money, who is typically the breadwinner in Black homes, it's always the Black women or the Black woman. So the reason that financial domination is so attractive, so to speak, is because in our dynamic, like I said, the dom-sub act of exchanging power through monetary gifts, in our dynamic as a Black woman, you get to finally, for a lot of women, you get to finally be on the receiving end. You don't have to talk about going 50-50. You don't have to talk about settling for less. You don't have to beg men to do the bare minimum. And you as the woman, as the divine feminine, can finally, even as a dominant woman, finally sit in your, in, in what people would say submissive or receptive energy as the divine feminine and collect all of this cash from all of these different generous men that want to pay your bills, that want to buy you a car, that want to buy you a house, that want to pay off your student loan debt. These men are white. These men are black. These men are Asian. These men are African. These men are um, Hispanic. And they come in all different cultures, colors, and creeds. But that is one of the reasons why financial domination has become so elusive, so attractive. For a lot of women, they come to financial domination and they experience something elusive, so attractive. For a lot of women, they come to financial domination and they experience something standpoint, they experience something with men that they've never experienced before in their normal dating life. So if you're the kind of woman that's never had a man open the door for you or take you out on dates regularly or treat you very nice, kind, and respectful, if you come into financial domination, there's going to be almost a sense of culture shock when you realize, oh, Men are naturally wired to be providers. Men are naturally wired to provide. Men are naturally wired to want to take care of me. And these men that I've found only through exploring financial domination are now giving me something that I've never had from male counterparts or a father figure or uh, men, brothers, uncles, cousins, etc. So that's one perspective. Another perspective is the kind of woman that comes into financial domination and more than likely has already been operating in her dominant woman, dominant female energy. This kind of woman takes over in financial domination. It is very, very easy for her to find clients. It is very, very easy for her to find high profile subs and make a lot of money in financial domination because she's already by default been operating in that dominant, confident, uh, high priestess level energy as a black woman right? She knows what it's like to be a spoiled woman. She knows what it's like to always have men around her catering to her needs, saying yes, doing kind, nice things, etc. But again, the reason why financial domination itself at its core is so elusive is because as Black women, we have an opportunity here in financial domination to make much more money than you would ever imagine making at a nine to five, right? With the college degree, right? With a high school diploma, with a master's degree, sometimes even a PhD, right? With sometimes even with multiple degrees stacked on top of each other, you can make significantly more than that through financial domination. And as a black woman, that in today's culture and climate is elusive. So everybody wants this. But the reality is, as someone who's been in this industry since 2017, and as a Black woman who's been in this industry since 2017, not every single woman will reach that amount of success. 
You have some young ladies that um, get stuck in this cycle of struggling with their self-worth and self-image, and they wind up, because of that, uh, attracting men who do not value their time, effort, and energy, and they lowball themselves so they only make a few dollars here and there because a part of them on the inside, not the man, but a part of them on the inside as the woman is afraid to ask for more because again, she's struggling with her self-worth, her self-image. And then you have some other women who are very educated, who are very spiritually attuned and aligned to their divine feminine energy, their high priestess energy, and they know that they need to they have an obligation to demand more, take more, want more out of life. Those are the kind of women who reach six, seven, eight figures in financial domination. And they do it very quickly. One of the most common misconceptions in financial domination is that Black women aren't capable of making considerable money in financial domination. And that's just not true. That's inherently not true. And one thing you have to realize is that the adult industry, specifically in entertainment, thank you for the hearts, the adult industry, if we're talking about the history of these things, the history of this country that we're in right now, the United States of America, for those of you who do not know because you're here for the first time, I'm a financial dominatrix. I've been doing this since 2017. And I am also by degree and education and training and experience a historian. So the history of the adult industry or the spicy, as y'all like to say, industry was um, and is and will always be a market that was created to profit off of the bodies of black women. I'll say that again for those of you who, who usually need things repeated a second time for you when you're in school. The adult entertainment industry, the spicy industry, has and will always be, at its core, a market that was created to profit off of the bodies of black women. So, if the market of adult entertainment was created to profit off of the bodies of black women. Now that black women and all women of cultures and colors and creeds can now voluntarily participate in the adult industry. Why wouldn't you as a black woman be able to profit highly so off of the industry that was literally created to make money off of your body, right? For some of this, this is for some of y'all. This is gonna go over your heads. I understand that. That does happen a lot. My information is not for everybody. The energy that I bring to the my my content and and the way that I speak, everybody won't understand. You definitely have to have more than a high school education to get where I'm coming from. If it's shade, take it how it resonates. But I'll say it again. The adult entertainment, spicy work industry was created all those times ago to profit off of your body. Black woman. And now that you, for whatever reasons that you are here, as a consenting adult, you voluntarily decided to participate in this industry that was created to profit off of your body. Why wouldn't you be able to make maximum profit in this industry? Now, you can choose to agree or disagree with the way that I'm seeing this, but you need to hear it. Right. You need to hear it and you need to hear it this way. Because when you hear it a different way, y'all laugh. 
When you hear it a different way, you disregard the information. When you hear it a different way, you make jokes and call people hoteps and Dr. Umars and all of these other things. You don't take the information seriously until something like what happened last week happens. You don't take the information seriously until, like I said, what happened last week happens. If you are just now in 2024, after the presidential election, finally starting to wake up and take what's been happening to black women and the need to be in spaces with all black women and uplift all black women and push black women towards entrepreneurship and push black women to, instead of fighting for seats at the tables, all of these other races to now focus on your own community. If the first time that thought in a serious level has crossed your mind since the election, you are already too late. You are already several centuries behind. Right? And I'm not here, even though I am an educator and I am a historian, I'm not here to give people who refuse to listen all this time a quick, fast lesson now that they want to take things serious. Harriet Tubman used to shoot people in the face if it meant that that person was going to jeopardize her making her escape and taking people with her. Okay. So, in the name of financial domination and building wealth as a black woman, there are some things that you need to know. So for those of you who are here, for those of you who have already been watching, uh, go ahead and let me know in the comments, where are you specifically tuning in from? For those of you who are here, for those of you who are participating, for those of you who are in the front of the room, where are you from? What state are you tuning in from? And please let me know whether that, whether you voted this way or not, whether your state is red or blue. So we got Ohio, Denver, Maryland, blue state, Alabama, red. Right? If you are tuning in from the United States of America, I need you to tell me what state you are from and how your state officially ranks, even if that's not your specific belief. We got red states, blue states, California, Colorado was also blue. Thank you for God. Thank you guys for participating in the chat. But for those of you who are tuning in blue, but not that blue. So it really means it's not blue at all. <laughs> New York blue. So for those of you who have been tuning in from the red states, you don't have to tell us your business, but can you give me a word that describes the energy that you felt in your state and your hometown since the election? And if you're in a blue state, please do the same as well, because just because the state is registered as blue doesn't mean racism doesn't exist. I can go drive down 10 minutes down the street and find for you two or three houses that have always had big ass Trump signs outside their house. Okay. One word to describe it is unfortunately celebration. Right. So the question is for those of you who are tuning in from these red and blue states, give me a word or an adjective to describe the energy of your community around you since last week. The reason that I'm asking this question is because as always, one word, frightening. Thank you. I hope you're safe. The reason that I'm asking this is because Black people are real quiet. 
The reason that I'm asking this is because the energy of the world has shifted. Some of you are too young to to understand um, the history of this country. Some of you have been in states where your board of education and your state legislators and members of Congress and Senate or whoever else played a part. Um, some of you live in states where in, in elementary school and middle school and high school, maybe even at the college level, your history lessons uh, missed, missed crucial parts of information about history, about the history of this country and how I'm not going to say people of color, how black and indigenous people have been treated in this country for better and for worse. Some of you have tuned in from states that have never taught you black history. Dallas is blue. However, we all know Texas is lit up red in the comments. It's important that if you have not been paying attention till now, that you are quiet and that you are doing your research. Right now, more than ever, Black women need to be solidified with each other. We need to be in safe spaces and communities with each other. You guys know from day one, I have always been a Black femme supremacist. And I have always created spaces specifically for Black women. And that I've never backed down from a challenge to stand up for Black women. Making it very clear that my space is only for Black women. I don't care about white tears. Or, or fake cries of, of racism and discrimination because black women have always been my focus. The name is Afro Dom. There's only one culture and creed of women that can produce an Afro. And D-O-M-M-E is the feminine connotation for the word Dom. So financial domination is wealth building for black women. Using financial domination, using money from other people through financial domination will and can make you incredibly successful. There are women out here legitimately, and I'm not talking about these white girls and mixed race women that you see on TikTok who claim that they just started financial domination 60 days ago and they're already up $50,000. I'm talking about black women and black content creators who have been in this industry for years. Who have put their time, effort, labor, love into this community by creating content, by creating safe spaces at parties and events, by creating workshops for education, gun safety, self-defense for Black women. People who have dedicated their time and their monies. That's what's most important. People who have dedicated their time and their monies to providing education job opportunities, grant funding, housing to the community. Those kinds of women in financial domination are making thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a month. Fifty thousand dollars a month is about six hundred thousand dollars a year. That's a lot of money. Right? There are people with multiple degrees, multiple certificates, incredible influence in the corporate sector that don't even see $600,000 a year. But numbers like this through financial domination are possible, very easily possible. When you have the right business structure, 
when you have the right education, when you have the right circle of women around you, and the right scope of clientele. These aren't the kind of men that are in the comment section asking for sugar babies and demanding that you send them the deposit. These aren't the kind of men who spend 8, 12 hours a day on Twitter begging for loyal doms and all of these other scam tweets and text messages that some of you seem to keep falling for. But let me be very clear. If this is the first time since 2017 that you have actually opened your ears to listen to what I'm saying, financial domination is wealth building for black women. And through financial domination and using other people's money, money from men, money that you don't have to pay back. We're not talking about a loan. We're not talking about grants. We're not talking about needing to tie yourself to a man and get married to someone in order to get a check. We're not talking about laying down next to some white man and letting him stick things inside of you in order for you to get chump change in exchange. We're not talking about that. I am talking about cold, hard capital gains. And yes, relationship building, but relationships that work for you. Relationships that do not involve exploiting your body more than it's already been exploited by the government. So, all of the stuff that you see on TikTok of spin the wheel games, pay pig this, well sub that, that's little girl stuff. And as an educated black woman, if you are here in this space, you are considered an educated black woman. As an educated black woman, I need you to know that spin the wheel games, pay pigs, whale subs, what website do I use to find them? What do I have to say and do to find subs? That's going to keep you poor. If you continue with that mentality or the mentality that someone else, a lesser dom with less experience than you, if you keep that mentality, you will stay poor. I'll repeat it again for people who are just tuning in. The pay pigs, the whale subs, the, oh, spin the wheel games with subs and get money from them. And, oh, do retweet games online with subs and get money from them. Oh, charge $40 for a minimum tribute. And then if they don't pay it, block them for $100 and make them pay. If you continue to follow that advice, you will stay poor in 2025. I promise you that. I promise you that. So, as an educated black woman, as a black woman who takes her voice, her power, her authority, Seriously, you need to know that in order to become successful, truly successful in financial domination, you're going to need to do a couple of different things. Number one, you're going to need to up the price times a thousand, times a thousand. We no longer, as black women in the United States of America, all the UK girls, all the C C Canadian ladies, all the South American beauties, all the East, West, North, South Africa ladies, sit this conversation out. I love you guys. You guys have been my students for years. Like I said in the beginning, though, sit this conversation out. Because the presidential election in the United States of America will probably wind up affecting you but not to the same extent as those of us who are on this land right fucking now. 
So sit this conversation out for a second. Ladies, United States specifically, black women, you need to up the price times thousands. And I can't fucking say it no more. We cannot keep having fucking conversations about you charging 40 fucking dollars and not having the fucking self-confidence and worth to demand more. I said it in January that we were going to stop having this conversation this year. And yet I've had to circle back to it again because some of y'all still don't get it. Or some of you are now just finding me after wasting six, seven, eight months with a different organization and not getting anywhere with it. The day of $40 tributes, $50 tributes, $100 tributes is done. I don't give a fuck how thirsty you are, how desperate you are, how many bills you got piling up. You are not helping yourself by only accepting $40. You are not helping yourself by doing sessions on Skype for $50. You are disrespecting yourself. You are disrespecting your ancestors and you are lessening the value of this community, which is why some subs think that it's okay to only give your cheap ass $40 because you've now become a $40 hoe. But instead of being on the corner of Garrison Boulevard as a $40 hoe, remember the woman you used to judge when you was driving past them? You became just like her. Except she know how to ask for more money. And you on the internet thinking that you better than her because you're not walking the corner with her. And you charging less than she is. Let's talk about it. The women you used to drive past, they was on the corner in the lingerie selling it. They don't even charge $40 anymore. But you only charging $40. Make that make sense. Like I said, this is not about misogyny because we all in the same category. But the reality is we no longer have space for you to be insecure about your power, about your voice, about your authority, about demanding more. If it's scary at this point, sis, you no longer have a fucking choice. You're going to have to do it anyway. And if that means you lose some subs, fuck them because they was never your clients. If the motherfucker that was only capable of giving you $40 no longer can give you $200, he was never your client. He was your abuser. I'll say it again. If the motherfucker that used to only give you $40 for a session can no longer give you $250, $500, $1,000 now that you are upping the price because you have no other fucking choice and he can't continue sending and booking sessions. He was not your fucking sub. He was not your fucking client. He was your abuser. And you were being manipulated in the sake of this man's pleasure. And it's going to hurt like shit for you to acknowledge that. But I need you to feel it. I need you to hear it. I need you to acknowledge it. I need you to be fucking angry about it. And with the anger that you feel, don't attack me because I'm the messenger. I'm doing you a favor. Trust me. I'm doing you a favor. Messenger, I'm doing you a favor. Trust me, I'm doing you a favor. Okay, I got a lot of shit going on. If it's not apparent by my bald ass head that I got a lot of shit going on, please believe it. I'm doing you a favor. If that doesn't make you angry enough to want to do something about it 
and up the price and change some shit around and flip the fucking table, I don't know what will. I don't know what will. Someone in the comments, Dallas is proper blue, but rural areas like, I don't know how to say that one, Anna, Melissa, and McKinney are red. Some of y'all need to start studying your history. Ask yourself why certain rural areas in your states are red. More than likely, those places were where all of the slave plantations were. In the state of Maryland specifically, let's do a history lesson for a second. We are technically blue. But in all the rural areas like Prince George's County, Annapolis, Maryland, where they brought the fucking ship of slaves and dropped us the fuck off. Those places are still red because that's where all the slave plantations were, where all of your uh, centuries and centuries and centuries and centuries ago, all of your great, 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 greats, grandmothers, uncles, cousins, descendants of your, your loved ones and your boyfriends and your baby daddies. That's where they was at in those rural areas where the plantations were. And that's why they still red, because those places miss your black ass. That's why they wanna go back so fucking much. That's why they wanna make America great again. Cause your black ass is walking around way too goddamn free. And somebody like you used to be worth a lot of fucking money on a field. And they want you back out there. Now, if you dumb enough to believe that that's not what the fuck is going on, then maybe, baby, maybe, baby, you need to be out there with them. But for all of my smart and educated women who have more than a high school diploma and can, and can critically think for themselves, you know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about. Okay, and if it doesn't make you angry enough to want to flip the fucking table and do something about it, I don't know what will. Because the same motherfuckers that wrote it red is your subs. The same subs, the same men, the same white men, the same black men, the same Hispanic men in this country that voted to take away your reproductive rights are some of your highest paying subs. I don't give a fuck what he told you. In the moment of this, he gonna say whatever he wanna say in, in, the, in the moment of this to get that end result. <clears throat> but if you are not smart enough to critically think and see the truth, I'm going to say it again. Some of your highest paying subs, black, white, Hispanic, last week voted to take your reproductive rights away. So black women, like I said, it's a few things we need to do. Number one, you need to raise the price. You're going to have to get over your, your fear of not being able to demand more. If you need to go to therapy and get some counseling help right now, do that shit. If you need to block bitches, do that shit. If you need to block subs, do that shit. But we don't have any more room or time for you to be on the fence about this shit. We don't have any more time for you to be like, uh, but I'm so scared to ask for more because what if they don't give it to me? I used to be sympathetic. We used to talk about imposter syndrome and EMF, EFT tapping and mantras and affirmations and stuff like that to train our subconscious mind to be more comfortable with accepting more, more comfortable with demanding more money, more comfortable with raising our prices. But that was in 2017. 
2019. It's 2024. And Chester Cheeto is back in office or trying to be. He might just fuck around and go to jail. I hope he die, but he might just fuck around and go to jail before he get in there. But we no longer have time for you to, to figure this out. We no longer have time for you to pussyfoot. And I'm not using you as an example because I know a lot of people ask these questions. We don't have any more time for you to be scared to show your face. We don't know. We don't longer have time for y'all to be scared to put yourself out there. You either in it or you're not. And like I said, I'm not bashing you for asking this question because I know you guys are coming from a good place. But what I'm saying is we no longer have time for y'all to be scared. You either in it or you out. You either feel that burning fire in your chest that says this is what I am called to do and what I need to do. And right now in today's culture and climate, I no longer have the privilege because black people is privileged. I no longer have the privilege to be scared and not take action. Now's the time to take action. Our ancestors, uh, and I'm not talking about four or five hundred years ago ancestors. I'm talking about our ancestors from the Black Panther Party. Take it back to those folks. The 70s, the 60s, the 80s, the 90s. Those of our ancestors too, because some of them ain't here no more. And as soon as you gone, you become the ancestor. Our Black Panther Party ancestors didn't have the privilege of, well, what if I don't want to show my face? It's a fucking revolution. You want to be a part of the revolution or you want to be scared in the house and, and afraid to show your face, but want justice. I want justice, but I don't want nobody to know that I'm coming out here for justice. And like I said, I'm not shading you in the comments for asking that question. I'm just using it as an example because it happens all the time. Our ancestors who were in the Black Panther Party did not have the privilege of, well, I want to be a Black Panther and I want to show up and I want to fight for justice, but I'm scared to show my face. Can I still show my, can I, can I be a Black Panther and not show my face? You either want the revolution or you don't. You either going to show up for the revolution or you're going to stay the fuck home. So it is going to require you to show your face to some extent. It is going to require you to show up. It is going to require you to get education. It is going to require you to network, to talk to people, to build relationships and connections. Because one, the relationships and connections is what gets you paid. And then two, the relationships and connections is what keeps you safe. So not showing your face, just like somebody said, not showing your face makes verification a lot harder. You can be anonymous in your content. Being anonymous in your content does make filming and recording content harder because you always have this objection and fear around showing your face and being visible and being seen in the back of your subconscious mind. So if you have this subconscious fear of being visible and seen, that's what's going to make you procrastinate. That's what's going to have you, uh, I should film some content today, but I don't feel like it. I'm still scared to show my face. Eh, I know I need to go to this party and network with these other really powerful doms, but eh, I don't really want to show my face. So you need to be 10 toes on a decision. You need to be 10 toes on your choices, whether it's from a creative perspective or a safety perspective. But you're going to have to show up. You're going to have to do something. It wasn't a personal attack, as I said already earlier, about creatively not showing your face. If you wear a hijab, then from a cultural and religious perspective, some of your beliefs don't align with the same beliefs as adult work. So you need to ask yourself, if I wear a hijab and I'm interested in spicy work, does this align with the religious beliefs I claim to have? Or the real question, 
does my religious beliefs, whether these are religious beliefs that I've adopted on my own or that were given to me by my parents and family because of the way I was raised, do those religious beliefs continue to align with who I am as a young woman? That's the real question. That's the real T. Because if you wear a hijab and you're trying to do a sex work, those two don't match. I'm not saying that it's impossible, but those two typically don't match. The need for female modesty to the point that people can only see this part of your face or your eyes don't typically align with you doing this on the internet or showing feet on the internet. So it's not about the real question is not necessarily about, well, can I do this and can I do that? Putting objections on yourself. But honestly, just from the outside looking in, do your religious beliefs still support what you believe as a young woman? And do you need to, instead of contorting and making what could be a very profitable career for you in adult work, contorting that to fit your fear of hiding face and religious and moral objections, the real T is that you need to spend some time questioning those moral objections and, and religious beliefs. And then after finding some resolve within yourself, thank you for the hearts, finding some resolve within yourself about those moral religious beliefs, then possibly come back to this. So I'm not saying this as any type of, you know, persecution or judgment or anybody because I was raised as a Christian. Christians don't curse. Christians don't smoke weed. Christians don't get tattoos. Christians don't believe in spicy work. Christians don't do a lot of shit. But it took me some time as an adult to realize I'm not actually a Christian. I don't believe in the teachings of Jesus Christ. I don't believe or practice the religion of my slave masters, my ancestors' slave masters. So that's why it was very easy for me after figuring that out to not participate. And because I figured it out, I'm not a Christian. I don't believe this. I don't like the loopholes and plot holes that I'm finding in this. I don't like the way that Christianity has brainwashed generations of people in my family and in my communities. And I don't want to participate in this. I found it way easier to show my face, to show up for myself, to be loud, proud, and unapologetic. So that's why I'm suggesting it to you like that. If, you're not, if you don't want to show your face from a creative perspective or a religious perspective, it's time to, instead of questioning me or questioning, hey, can I still do this and be it and be all of these different things? It, it's time to question your religious beliefs and some of the things that you were taught or indoctrinated into as, as a young child growing up into a young adult and how that shaped you into the woman that you are right now in this moment how it's changed you for the better or worse. And if you want to continue practicing that going forward, because it's your life, nobody else's. Your parents' religion doesn't have to be yours. They make you feel that way when you were a kid, right? When they take you to church and they force you to do the prayers or they force you to wear specific outfits, they absolutely make it feel like you have to be the religion of your family, of your mother, of your father. But you a grown ass woman. And apparently I'm talking about some serious things because people have called themselves reporting my life. I don't give a fuck. But question those things and come back to it. Because as I always say, there's no such thing as a coincidence. You find things for a reason. Some of you were searching financial domination. Some of you were doing research about financial domination. Some of you were probably doing research about sugaring or being a sugar baby or whatever you've been looking for, whatever you've been Googling, it's for a reason. I tell ladies who are in relationships the same thing. 
Some ladies ask me in the comments, well, can I do this if I have a boyfriend? Can I do this if I'm married? The question isn't about can you do it if you have a boyfriend? The real question is why are you married and why are you in a relationship where your man is not providing for you enough and you feel the need to have a sugar baby or to be a financial dominatrix? So sometimes we avoid asking the more difficult questions and try to ask easier questions because it seems like that's an easier question to ask because the answer is going to be a yes or a no, right? So if you ask the easier question, can I do financial domination without showing my face? The easy answer is yes or no. But the more difficult question that you'll have to sit with over several days, sometimes for some people, several months, sometimes for some people, several years with the help of uh, therapy or whatever else. The more difficult questions are, why am I at a point in my life or my marriage or my relationship where my partner does not financially support me enough and I feel the need to go outside of my relationship and get support from another man? What about my religious beliefs, whether they were Christian, Jehovah, uh, Buddha, Ali, Jesus Christ, all of them motherfuckers, whoever you think you're talking to. Why has my religion supported me or not supported me to a certain extent that has now pushed me to seek liberation through spicy work? and being able to express myself and explore my sexuality. How is my religious beliefs or cultural beliefs and religious upbringings supported me or unsupported me all the way up to this point that I feel in my subconscious mind so desperate for a sense of autonomy, freedom, and sexual exploration that I am now considering adult work. Those are the difficult questions we need to ask ourselves. Why am I unable to ask or demand more money or more out of life? Even if it's not money, why am I afraid to ask for more out of life based on my mental stance, the way I grew up, my family's religious beliefs, the state that I live in, the education that I've received? These are the more difficult questions that we're not able to ask ourselves or we have in the past been unable to ask ourselves. And I'm going to sound like a broken record, but I'm going to circle back to today's discussion. We no longer have the privilege or time to pussyfoot about those three questions. They need to be asked. They need to be thought about. You need to put yourself around other black women who feel that and can let you vent about your belief on those questions without shame or judgment. If you need to go to a counselor or a therapist and work through some shit, fucking do it. But we no longer have the privilege of time and ignorance to not ask those questions. We got to talk about it and we got to unfortunately... Because healing is not a quick process. Healing is not a quick process. You don't talk about something as impactful as how your religion since a child at 30, 40, 50 has fucked you up to a certain extent. Or how the way that you were raised and the experiences that you've had with men because of your father or because of the male figures in your life have fucked you up to a certain extent. Now that you don't, now you're so fucking insecure, you don't even have the ability to ask men for help because it's like all of this trauma from your daddy not being there or your uncle doing this to you and your brother doing that to you. That's a lot to try to unpack in a short amount of time. I get it. But unfortunately, we no longer have the privilege of time. We no longer have the privilege of of being willfully ignorant and not talking about it, not dealing with it, 
Not asking ourselves those hard questions, not journaling about it in some way or shape or form. We have to get this out. You have to find that answer within yourself and you have to make a decision. Is this for me or isn't it for me? Because all of those, those three powerful questions are what's always going to sit in the back of your mind and again, make you procrastinate. Make you not show up for yourself, right? You, you purchase tickets to go to a networking event, but then you ghost and don't show up. That's, that's self-sabotage. You say that you want to put yourself out there and be a financial dominatrix, but now you're scared to show your face and now you haven't posted content all week long and therefore you haven't made any money and you're frustrated and you give up. And on a surface level, you can blame it on the market being oversaturated, <clears throat> you not having enough information, subs not being real. But the reality is you procrastinated. You didn't feel confident about yourself. You didn't put yourself out there. And there are several already subconscious objections about religion or about worthiness or whatever else in the back of your mind that are making you do those things. We no longer have the privilege to, to, to ignore it or not talk about the elephant in the room. So that's number one. I need you, or really that's number two, but recapping number one, you need to up the price. Two, we need to start asking ourselves these difficult fucking questions. And within asking ourselves these difficult questions, find the fire to continue or find clarity and go do something else. Find the fire to continue forward or find the clarity and go do something else. Because not everybody needs to be a financial dominatrix. Not everybody will be successful as a financial dominatrix. Some people just do not have the personality to be a financial dominatrix. Maybe you're too nice. Maybe you're too passive. Maybe you like when men tell you what to do. Maybe you like the fact that men have voted to take away your reproductive rights. If so, you now have the clarity that you need to go do something else and be a housewife and cook and clean and not be able to vote and have less rights than your mama. Maybe you like that. But if you don't like the fact that people are trying to take your reproductive fucking rights, you don't like the fact that you now have less rights than your crazy ass fucking mother. And that people are trying to go back to a time where your ass could be bought legally. I'm not talking about off a of, off of Garrison Boulevard for five, ten minutes. I'm talking about bought at an auction and you were property. So much property and worth so much that banks were established to house documents that showed that you were property like TD Bank, for example. TD Bank is one of the most famous and oldest banks in the world because people used to go to TD Bank and put deeds in there for their slaves. Google it. So if you don't like that and that does make you angry. And that does put a sense of fire in your ass and in your chest to flip the fucking table over and do something about it. It's time to proceed forward. Number three. As a financial dominatrix, you need to take ownership and training your subs and slaves much more seriously. The cutesy tootsy foot sessions and the content like, ooh, you're a loser. Leave all that in, in 2023, 2024, the earlier parts of 2024. All the feel goods uh, and, and the feel good content and the, the, the pandering and catering to subs in your content, leave all of that in the past. As a educated black woman in financial domination, you need to take ownership and slave training much more seriously. You need contracts 
legally binding contractual agreements. You need insurance policies, legally generated insurance policies and expensive, legally generated and expensive insurance policies that your subs would be paid for, not you. But you must be the beneficiary of it and you must be the sole beneficiary of it. Not the beneficiary along with him, his wife and his kids. The sole beneficiary of that expensive life insurance policy. You need to incorporate and protect your finances. And you need to find a way to pull off of the internet. Now, for a lot of people, I know that's going to come as a shock because for the last several years, I've always told you guys, start online. That's the safest way to go. That's the safest way to build passive income before you start putting yourself out there on um, in the real time sector. Hold on, y'all. TikTok, if y'all don't stop playing with me about this daggone puzzle. Okay. Like I said, I've always said, um, that's going to come as a shock to you guys because I've always said, start online, put yourself out there online, build up your passive income, build up these different income streams and stuff like that. But because of the fact that last week, Thus far, we haven't had any changes thus far, but last week didn't go as we thought it was going to go. And we no longer have the privilege of time or ignorance. I still want you to start online. I still want you to focus on building passive income online, but I need you to know that everything can't be done online. And it may seem old school, <laughs> Because I'm a licensed, or I said licensed, I'm a professionally trained photographer and filmmaker. A lot of people say that print is dead. The need for magazines, newspapers, old school pen and pad, newsletters and stuff like that. People say that medium of communication, that medium of marketing is dead. But right now, with the, the, the inability to be willfully ignorant... And, and a procrastinator that we have in our community, we need to bring some of those things back. Because yes, I want you to be online. Yes, I want you to build your online presence. Yes, I want you to build passive income online. But not everything you do can be done or said on this internet anymore. For some of y'all, that's going to still go over your head. You need to find a way to build this up the right way, to keep certain shit offline and still make money. Because if you say certain shit on the internet, they're going to have documented proof of what you're doing. But if you don't, <laughs> who knows how a digital footprint works? I don't give a fuck about my digital footprint because I know I'm speaking truth. I'm speaking facts and it ain't never stopped me from doing nothing or passing a background check or a fingerprint screening. So I say what the fuck I want. But I know that there are certain plans and actions that y'all will never see on TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, wherever the fuck you think you found me. It's certain shit about me that you will never know. Unless you right here in my face and the cameras is off and the internet is unplugged and we are having a one-to-one -one human interaction. Like I said, for some of y'all, that's going to go over your head because I'm not laying it out A, B, C, D, E, F, G for you. And you probably a little slow. Take it how it resonates. Don't get in your feelings. You're probably a little slow and it's going to go over your head. That's why I do the replay. Watch this part again. I still want you to be successful online. I still want you to build passive income online with your content, with your monthly subscription sites, with your chat lines, with your Skype sessions. But everything can't be for the internet. Old school pen and paper. 
old school newspaper, old school letters in the mail. You can figure something out and get creative. But going forward, as they said in the past, the revolution will not be televised. The revolution will not be televised, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? You're not going to be able to stream the revolution like a fucking car uh, uh, marathon. You're not going to be able to, to, to stream the revolution and the fight for freedom like a uh, Shira 7 lecture. Okay? You're not going to be able to, to watch reels and TikToks about the, the black 2024 black. Okay? You're not going to be able to, to watch reels and TikToks about the, the black 2024 black. Okay? You're not going to be able to, to watch reels and TikToks about the, the black 2024 black. Okay? You're not going to be able to, to watch reels and TikToks about the, the black 2024 black. 